Hello there Star Wars fans and may the 4th be with you. If you didn't know the Bad Batch kicked off last night and today we're going to break it down. So the opening of the Bad Batch shows us the transition from the Clone Wars, indicating that the Clone Wars is over and it's time for a new story. Now the Bad Batch's story begins on Kalar, where we're introduced to Deepa Bilobas fighting off Separatist forces with Clone Commander Grey. And it's looking grim till they are rescued by Kalob Doom and Clone Force 99. During the battle, Tech receives encrypted comm chatter on the Clone Channel that Obi-Wan is defeating Grievous and the war is almost over. Shortly after that, Clone Commander Grey receives a message to execute Order 66. Deppa senses the deaths of Jedi throughout the galaxy when all her clone troopers start firing on her. She is able to block a few rounds. She's able to yell, run Caleb, prior to receiving a key Adi Mundi death. Lines the Grand Inquisitor would use later to torture Kanan. Now during all this, the Bad Batch is unaffected by Order 66 and cannot make sense of what is happening. Tech says the regs are ordered to execute all the Jedi for treason, and Hunter tries to protect Doom. Crosshair still attacks him and says good soldiers follow orders, a line first uttered by Tup when his chip malfunctioned and executed Jedi Master Tiplar. So it seems that this line is built in brainwashing and is a message telling the troops that you're just following orders and not to feel guilty. Doom thinks that Hunter is still trying to kill him and makes a leap of faith across the valley and escapes the clones. When Crosshair catches up to Hunter, Hunter tells him that the Padawan is dead. The clones fly back to Kamino and Crosshair is suspicious of Hunter. We see that their ship is escorted by a pair of V-Wings, which is the predecessor to the TIE Fighter, and Tech is curious about the stricter procedures that are in place. Now when landing on Kamino, there are shock troopers all around and Hunter exclaims why are the Crescent Guard here? And it's obvious that these shock troopers are in place to maintain order. We see a covered dead Jedi being wheeled out and it appears that the battle just completed. Now the Jedi's hand falls out of the covering and drops a lightsaber and this hand is yellow appearing to be Miri Allen which would be the race of Master and Dooley. While the lightsaber does have similar characteristics, it is not an exact match. Shortly after we find out the Kaminoans made the Bad Batch on purpose changing their genetic makeup. We get a glimpse of Emperor Palpatine's proclamation of the Republic transitioning to the Empire, and we see that the regular clone troopers are cheering, while the Bad Batch is just standing in confusion. Also, the regular clone troopers' personalities have completely changed, and the Bad Batch notices that they are acting programmed. Shortly after, we're introduced to Omega, who is confirmed to be a girl, and Nala Se says her job is the medical assistant. Admiral Tarkin arrives shortly after, surrounded by shock troopers, to deliver to the Kaminoans that the contract has been cancelled and the contract was with the Republic, not the Empire. And here we kind of get an outlining of the reason why they would want to transition from clone troopers to enlisted troops. And one of the main causes is the enlisted troops are only half the price and systems of the Empire could be forced into service. Shortly after a brawl breaks out in the cafeteria and Clone Force 99 defends Omega like one of their own. Echo is knocked out and we see AZI-3 again assisting Omega. Now AZI-3 assisted Clone Trooper 5s when the discovery of the chips first took place. During his blackout, Echo notices Tarkin. He later tells Clone Force 99 that during the Citadel fight, he was there to rescue Tarkin, and Tarkin is no fan of clones. And this happens to be the mission that Echo goes MIA. Shortly after that, Clone Force 99 is battle tested. We hear Tarkin's calm, famous lines of, you may begin when ready, similar to the line he says when he's ordering the Death Star to fire. Clone Force 99 easily dispatches the training droids. Tarkin wants them to have a real test and turns on live fire. Here we see Death Trooper Phase 2, and they prove to be more than a match for Clone Force 99. Tarkin asks Lamasu if there's any more variations of clones, and the Kaminoans confirm that there are only 5 remaining. He asks, did they execute Order 66? And the Kaminoans are unable to confirm. And here we learn that Crosshair filed a report indicating that the Padawan had escaped, and this shows that he's betraying his brothers for the Empire. Tarkin sends them on another test, to get rid of insurgents on Onderan. Now you're probably familiar with this planet if you watch Clone Wars, because this is a planet that Obi-Wan, Ahsoka, and Anakin taught guerrilla warfare to rebels in hopes of uprooting the Separatists. Now when Clone Force 99 arrives on Onderan, they hesitate shooting the rebels because they realize that they're not droids and are confused. Then they are captured and we meet Saw Gerrera for the first time, who identifies them as former Republic soldiers who would not stop fighting oppression and declares that the rise of the Empire is illegal. Saw tells the clones that the Civil War is about to begin, and this is a reference to the Galactic Civil War that we see in the original trilogy. Hunter then dispatches an Imperial pro-droid that had been following them, recording their actions. On the way back, Crosshair gets upset at them failing their mission and is proclaiming that Hunter is unfit to lead the team. Hunter tells the team that Omega gave him a warning not to return, and Tech confirms that Omega has enhanced senses. Now it seems like Omega does not have advanced aging like Boba Fett. Omega sneaks into the Bad Batch's room and finds a Lothcat doll belonging to Wrecker. Now this is a nod to Rebels where the vast majority of the show is from Lothal, which happens to be where the cats are native to. Now once Clone Force 99 returns to the Camino system, they receive no response from the deck officer, 
Once landed, the shock troopers surround Clone Force 99 and accuse them of treason for failing to follow orders. While in prison, Crosshair continues to repeat good soldiers follow orders. Tarkin is curious why Crosshair did not resist and calls for the Kamino and Serena scan. This scan reveals that the chip is active but has little effect on the clones because of their genetic makeup. And it seems like Crosshair's chip is working a little bit better than the other clone troopers. Now Tarkin asks if the Kaminoans can take it to 100, and they do. The rest of the Bad Batch continues to sit in the ray shielded cell, and eventually decide to do the old escape through the ducks maneuver. Now prior to getting on their ship, Hunter says that they need to save Crosshair. And it just so happens Crosshair enters the hangar, wearing his new Death Trooper Phase 1 armor, and commanding his own squad. And he's carrying himself with a Clint Eastwood-esque swagger. They get in the old Mexican standoff, like Brad Pitt in the film Inglorious Bastard. Wrecker gets shot, and Crosshair uses him as bait, like the sniper did Vin Diesel in Saving Private Ryan. Namasu closes the door on Crosshair's forces, allowing the Bad Batch to escape, seemingly wanting to protect Omega at all costs. Now right before the door closes, Omega takes a shot right before Crosshair can, just like Marky Mark Wahlberg counter-sniping. Once back on the ship, Omega implies she has never fired or even held a blaster before, potentially implying something more than luck was involved. Hunter exclaims first time in space to Omega, giving a call back to the conversation between Padme and Anakin. But while Anakin was cold and lonely, Omega is excited for the new adventure. Hunter tells Tech to plot course to J-19, which is in the Sul Rip sector where Seleucami is located, which is giving us a good indication that they might be meeting up with Rex and Cut. Also, the Lasan bow rifle is named J-19. Hunter says strap up kid to Omega, which is a nod to Han and Luke when they were escaping Tatooine. Now what do I think about the first episode of Bad Bad? This episode was great so far. I love how its tone is serious and doesn't take time to build up, unlike in Rebels and in the Clone Wars. Now it seems like there's a lot of tension between the Empire and the Kaminoans. I would not be surprised if we see a Kaminoan rebellion, maybe using a different template of clone troopers, one that the Empire can't control. And ultimately, I think the Empire is going to wipe out Kamino. Now in regards to the dead Jedi on Kamino, I thought we could see Lasan Jedi Master Darao Topal, who is Cal Kestis' master, but he's large and purple because he's a Lasat. I'm looking forward to episode 2 that comes out this Friday. May the Force be with you.